Welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast with your host, Scott McMahon. Hi, and welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast, filmmaking freedom for the independent. This episode is sponsored by the book, How to Make and Sell Your Film Online and Survive the Hollywood Implosion While Doing It. It's available in paperback, as a Kindle ebook, as well as an audiobook. In fact, you can get the audiobook for free when you go to survivetheimplosion.com and sign up with Audible for the first 30 days. Again, that's at survivetheimplosion.com. In today's episode, we're going to focus on how you get people to show up for your screening, if it's at a film festival or if you're doing a private screening. And my filmmaking guest today is Alex Petrovich, and we're going to focus and do a case study on his particular dark comedy called Bad People. And you can learn more about his film over at badpeoplethemovie.com. So in this particular episode, I do a lot of the talking, <laughs> unfortunately. I used to do these uh, Film Marketing Fridays Google Hangout sessions, and I would bring filmmakers on who had a list of questions that I would do my best to curate the best answers I could for them in terms of what the experts say and, and in terms of what I've seen and my own experiences. You know, it's sort of like a, a window into some of the consulting that I've done uh, for other filmmakers in the past. And so that's what you get to see today. And and Alex has a particular um, uh, focus because he has a screening coming up and we're going to try to help him focus on what he can do between now and that screening to get as many people to show up and what he can what that means afterwards in terms of when he's ready to sell his film online. So I hope everyone gets a lot of value out of this episode. I mean, I think a lot of people are in the same boat here, which is they're working in the industry either, you know, in Hollywood or outside of Hollywood, but they're doing, you know, production work um, for ad agencies or things like that. And then they're making their independent film on the side and trying to figure out how they can bridge the gap between making a film and then getting people to see it. On top of like, you know, having a full-time job, on top of having a family to take care of, you know, where do you find the time to make all this stuff work? So without further ado, here is my guest, Alex Petrovich, on the Film Trooper podcast. Uh, basically, we, we got into a film festival, the Valley Film Festival, and it's kind of cool because they have a deal with the Lamely NoHo uh, theater chain. And what's cool about that is, um, you know, they, they will, you know, they, they project your movie in a theater where, you know, right next door, uh, you know, studio movies are playing. So it's like ultra high quality and, you know, it's just, it provides like an awesome venue for your movie to be screened, which is great. Yeah, um, very cool. Yeah. So I know the audience would be like, okay, so like, well, what's the movie? But before we get there, it's, what is the, what's the biggest challenge right now? Like, a, you know, that you're dealing with, um, at with the with your movie right now at this moment 100% um i think the biggest challenge well if i go back like back in time not to like <laughs> right now is i've listened to your podcast i listen on to the way to work i have like an hour drive each way so it's like i get to like kind of replay them cuz i can't take notes while i'm driving so i replay them and one of the ones is you talked with jason brubaker mm -hmm. and kind of like his model and your model is like, as soon as you start from the moment you think, Hey, I may want to make a movie, you should start telling people and, you know, making a website and just kind of, you know, documenting your process to slowly grill build like a ground game. And, uh, well, I guess my first error was I'm about, you know, a month or two away from it being live to be able to rent or purchase. And now I'm starting my, <laughs> social media campaign and stuff like that. So I think my my current issue is, you know, being a little behind on the game and getting engagement and getting the word out there and trying to find different ways to use social media, um, uh, you know, and trying to, you know, get people to get involved in this conversation about what the movie's about and the message it has and what kind of service it can provide to them. Why is it, why would they want to watch, you know, a little indie movie, a dark comedy versus, you know, what's being offered by the studios, et cetera. Right, right. So let me, uh, well, I know everybody's going to go, okay, so what's the movie? So if we're, we're in the elevator now, so what is your elevator pitch for your movie? Well, my pitch is this. It's kind of like, um, it's it, it's kind of like a dark comedy sketch comedy 
if you think of like Clerks and Key and Peele, if they were to, you know, have a child, a deranged, dark stepchild, um, that would be it. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a, a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie from like the 70s. That oh, John- yeah. Yeah. I, I watched that many times over. Oh my in gosh. fact, in fact, my neighbor when I was growing up, my neighbor was one of the actors in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no way! That's yeah, awesome. he he played. He was a father. They 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 were playing like like some board game. Um, yeah, yeah. it was like some ridiculous board game. But um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this well before Airplane, there was Kentucky Fried Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and that that is kind of my my thing is that I, I I just love that movie so much, and I thought it was hysterical, and I thought what was great is it had so many sketches, so you could kind of break the traditional like ninety minute you know screenplay idea and have freedom to just do whatever you wanted, and so the movie kind of just talks a lot of topics, uh, makes fun of a lot of topics that I wanted to like you know. Uh, touch upon i mean i grew up in washington dc and i grew up in the 90s when marion barry was caught um on tape smoking crack and then he still four years later got reelected as the mayor and i was just like wow like we just you know have a society where it's almost like anything can go and controversy wins and like we all have a little bit of bad people in us and i just i kind of just wanted to make fun of it so you know, I'm talking about politics, talking about online dating, talking about, you know, race and, you know, all sorts of things. So it's kind of a collage, but it comes from the Kentucky Fried movie inspiration and the overarching theme of the movie is, you know, bad people. Cool. So I think what um, to condense it, I think there was a nugget there, you know, from like an outside perspective. I think if somebody ever asked you like, hey. Uh, so what's your movie about or what it what is it you can say you know what i i can almost <laughs> well i can almost say you could do this you could say you know what um i don't know if you know but i it's because my movie's about but let me tell you something first is i grew up in washington dc in the 90s when marion barry was literally on tv you know smoking crack or whatever and yet he still got elected so that just it, it just baffled me so this movie is not about marion barry it's about it's is about the bad people in all of us, and so my movie is a sketch, a dark comedy uh, about the absurdity that this surrounds us all, and so it's just it's yeah. a, a vignette of like all these different scenarios. So that's what the movie is about. So what I'm trying to get there is like, you know, what's great is that I made the movie, yet you can summarize better than me. <laughs> well, so I'm just saying, like, if you you practice it. Um, yeah. You know, there's um, in sales, they, they do this thing where they give people scripts. So they train their salespeople with these scripts. And sometimes uh, some salespeople are better that, at it than others to make it more natural. Um, you yeah. know, you're, you're around the industry of like actors and so on. And so you can see it. But it, it's when you say it over and over again, um, yeah. what it does do, it, it, it'll it become second nature. So. I think yeah. what you can do is just like, it's great because you're like, when somebody asks you like, hey, what is your movie? Uh, what's about? What's your pitch? And it says, well, you know what? Let me tell you something. I grew up, you know, in Washington, D.C. DC in the 90s. Do you remember Marion Barry, the, the mayor? He was caught on camera smoking crack and yet he still got elected. This movie's I mean, not about that, but it's about, this is nuts. That means that there's, we celebrate our badness, you know, or... That right. bad people we have, uh, there's bad people in all of us, and so my movie is a vignette. So it's one of those things like, totally. It, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep that secret. Like, you know what? Let me tell you something. You know, and then it's just like a pause for them to like lean in. Like, okay, yeah. so, and then you tell this absurd r- story that you relate to, and then and then th- at, at that point, and people are like, okay, I get it. Okay, cool. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's 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 exactly the way it should be done. That's funny. I just because when when we all witnessed that in D.C., it was just like, what is going on? Like, how is this possible? Oh yeah. But then, and I and I think the more recent example is uh, the Canadian guy uh, Rob Ford. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, he was hysterical. I mean. That was just like comedy. I mean, that just provided material for every stand-up comedy uh, comic for months. Yeah, I seriously thought he was going to die. 
you know, <laughs> and like just you no know, his because it's the excess. I I was I I mean it looked like there was a point where he was about anyway. <laughs> yeah, he he was not living a healthy lifestyle. Well, I thought it's fascinating because you mentioned you know listening to our the podcast and the discussion because all the experts try to say like look when you, before you even make the movie you know you got to build your audience and, right. everybody, and everybody's just like what are you talking about what does that even mean I got and the funny thing is a lot of that expert talk sometimes comes from um some filmmakers that have gone down the path once and didn't do it and the second time they did it you know and they and they realized their sort of mis- mishaps and mistakes and they were able to do it but they had built something already prior like starting from scratch and building an audience is extremely difficult totally. and um well it can be difficult depending on like the project because certain sometimes you get a lightning in the bottle like just because right. it's uh it's a topical topic or, or something about it just strikes a chord and it goes beyond what you're ready for um but I also want to like let as filmmakers listening here, you know, sometimes that's just not the case. Sometimes you don't even know what movie you have, and I think that the the experts when they talk about that, maybe they come from like a business or a marketing standpoint, and that they they may not necessarily be like a hundred percent like filmmakers. Like there's always people around film that doing things like um, I help on the marketing side or I help on the acquisition side, or, you know. But there's sometimes they're not always like the people in the in the you know the dirt dealing with the creative process of making a movie and sometimes you just don't know like i'm in, literally in the process of like sharing all the stuff on my pod on the recent episodes like hey here's my latest film and it's totally not working you know <laughs> you know what i mean it's like so like i i could have tried to build an audience based on this idea but the reality is the idea wasn't strong enough or it might be fleshed out i don't i'm at this creative transitions phase where you know I'm lucky enough to have an, a platform to sort of share the bumps and bruises because I'm trying to show, edu- like, educate sort of the this oh, reality right. of the creative process. But once I think I have something that's working with a small group of people that are listening into this thing, then I think I can take it to the next level of getting ready to market it to, um, you know, a larger audience, you know, to, to find the true audience for the film. But I think right. it's okay. I, I, what I'm going to say is, like, I think it's okay. I don't think people need to stress out sometimes. Like, you know, yeah, all right. So you might have finished the movie. Now you got to find the audience. And the worst thing is somebody go, well, that's too late. You know what? There's no. I don't think there's any rules. I don't think anybody knows anything. Any. I mean, that that's the old saying. But really, it's true in the world of the di- what we're dealing with digitally. You know. One hundred percent. I I think so too. I I. I um... I think at my point, like what I've done is I uh, have just tried to build up, you know, you always talk about like providing a service um, to your audience. Um, And what I've been trying to do is like just try and build up content to provide uh, to people and try and make consistent content to try and find that audience. And that, you know, it's been working a little bit, but, you know, like, again, like I, I, I feel like I should have started earlier, but at the same time, like you said, in this digital world, it's like you can kind of just the best time to start is now, you know? Yeah. Here's the, here's the great thing about the digital space is like because there's so much noise, because there's so much stuff, content out there, you can launch this thing right now. And it might go to it might be crickets, you know, right. maybe a few people. It's fine. You can figure out a way to relaunch it later because you own the content. It's not you're not beholden to anybody. So, you know, your audience may not build into like. A year from now but what i'm saying is like but the people that find it a year from now it'll be new to them you know (laughs) exactly yeah yeah. so it's 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 kind of this weird yeah Yeah, it's kind of this weird thing like yeah you should really build i think what they're what they're trying to say is when you build your audience early you're building an anticipation so when you do have your first launch um, ready to screen it at a festival or at you know launch it online for sale yeah. you're just trying to capitalize on this this bulk mentality of oh it's anticipated it's finally here great now i can you know uh be swept up in the movement of the, all this this hype about this launch and it's it's like it's our independent movie independent filmmakers version of the opening box office weekend so sure. in the world of like online entrepreneurs and marketers, they, they, they call it launches. So they have a product launch or a book launch or anything, or they're doing a, a speaking tour. 
So they build up all this anticipation for this eventual launch that they concentrate everything within like a week's time because they, they're trying to limit it. Like it's, it's special, you gotta be here. Because the reality is, is most digital stuff could just exist all the time. Like there's no, there's no, there's no rush because <laughs> it'll always be there to some extent. So marketers have to create sort of this false sort of scarcity you know, by controlling the, uh, the launch moment. So that's what they're kind of getting at is, if you got a ton of people uh, um, that are excited about it, you build up this anticipation and then you have a call to action. The call to action is, here's the launch. It's only gonna be available for, you know, one week only, you know, get it now. Cause you're trying to create that frenzy. It's that opening box office weekend mentality. And then boom, that's where you get most yes. of your cash. You know, if, if it's done that way. The oh. other thing, to take into account is you probably heard me say before and you probably um before i start like what you were mentioning what you have to drive an hour each day to work so but you're working in the industry what is what is that that you do for but that's taking up most of your time in terms of uh, a job wise right now well it takes up most of my time what i do for my day job um is i'm a television editor right uh, and it's you know and it's television editors it we work long hours because you know you have to finish on a deadline because there are air dates and those are not flexible um it's not like you know an indie feature where it's like oh i'm really busy this month i'm going to put it off it's like we have to deliver on a deadline so Ooh. um so that's basically what takes up most of my time and that's you know long days five days a week and maybe even sometimes six if you know you're really up against it um but it's great because obviously, you know, it's it's really creative. So I'm blessed in that sense because I'm working in, you know, film and television and doing what I love to do. It's it's not making a movie, but I also my, you know, I think I've come to realize my first love is actually editing. I just find it so infinitely fun because you can go in any direction with it. How you score it, how you cut it, how long you hold on someone's look. It's just I love it. It's a playground, but you, it's a cool. lot of time. Are you yeah. able to di divulge uh, what any shows that you that you're working on? Well, currently I'm in the reality TV sphere. I've done a lot of narrative and short films, but right now I'm in reality TV and I'm cutting the show on Spike TV called Bar Rescue. Hmm. Um, it's a show where the host John Taffer goes to failing bars around the country and essentially with his bar science diagnoses why they're not doing well and what they can do to fix it. And then he implements his concepts and strategies. And after which the bars, I'd say, they say the stat is like 80 to 85% see huge gains and go on to be very successful. So it's actually, it's, it's kind of cool. It's like a renovation show and there's cool stories and, you know, interesting bar owners that are, you know, bizarre in their own way. <laughs> What's the, it's, uh, it's called bar, what again? Bar Rescue. Bar Rescue. So I think I've heard about this premise before. So it's very cool. So I yeah, they, they've been going, I mean, they're well over like 100 episodes. It's It's been going on for a while. They they definitely have an audience. That, there are a lot of people that love that show. Now let's, we can use that. Let's just use that concept, Bar Rescue, but we'll call it like Film Rescue. Not like that, but it's like, we'll take a look at your situation. I think, because that helps because it's like, okay, now we know what your day job is, which is great. Keeps your chops up, you know, in the filmmaking, editing space, you know, which is fantastic. But you said you have this long hour commute because you're in Los Angeles. You know, yes. and one a long hour commute can be like going from one block to the other block. You know, yes. <laughs> you know, you know it, it's it's just the way it is. So then, um, then you have another aspect, your home life that takes up a lot of time because you have. Tell, why well, you share us with us that? <laughs> yes, I have two young daughters, uh, two years old and nine months old, which is. <laughs> consumes a lot of time and energy and and it's wonderful and there's nothing more that i want to do is spend time with them but it, yeah it takes a lot a lot of time right um, yeah and then so then you have like then you're expected to be like like where do you fit in this independent film that you just that you've finished which is congratulations on finishing it and getting yes. it into the valley view is a valley view fest 
It's the Valley Film Festival. Valley, it, Valley it's Film a festival, festival in Los Angeles that celebrates. I mean, they take films from all over, but they try and celebrate films that were made in Los Angeles and more specifically the Valley, which is kind of cool. It has like a local aspect to it. Okay, cool. So then you're you're in LA. You have have a screening, and it's coming up on Thursday. Well, tell me, is it Thursday, t- September 29th? Yes, Thursday, okay. September 29th at 10 p.m. Okay, um, which is cool. I I mean, I guess our you know, we were talking a moment before about, you know, creating kind of a excitement. Um, I guess our first excitement would be that you can get tickets 50% off by this next Tuesday, um, September 20th. Um, but then, yeah, the screening is on September 29th, which we're pumped about because it's a great time to get like the cast, the crew, family, friends, et cetera, out there to watch the movie. Right. So the interesting thing is like, so like what's next? It's like, well, how do you get, I'm assuming you're asking, thinking like, well, it's done. It's going to have a screening. Um, Mm -hmm. but how do I get people to show up? How do I get people to, you know, that everybody's like, how to get people to watch my movie. (laughs) Totally. That's like such the million dollar question, especially as you know, in this world where, you know, there's a lot of content. Anyone can buy a DSLR. Um, uh, I mean, right now where we stand is I was lucky enough to secure distribution with Leo Mark Studios. Oh, nice. And yeah, we're pumped about that. And they're going to – our street date um, is November 11th. And he – our – you know, the company said that we're going to have it in 60 countries on iTunes and seven countries on Amazon. And that's wonderful. And we're really, really, really excited. But at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of content on those platforms. So you still have to, um, you know, get the word out there. So I, you know, that's, that's our challenge. That's that million dollar question that we're coming to. Um, I mean, my, my thought was my thinking, you know, from listening to your podcast and stuff like that was to constantly provide content to viewers to kind of get the word out. And what I did in line with what we just spoke of, like me having kids and an intense job and whatnot, is I spent a weekend thinking about how could I make a ton of content over one weekend so that I could kind of backlog it and release it each week and not have to think about it. So it's kind of like on to automate it so that I don't, you know, I don't have to worry about it with my time constraints. And so that's kind of what I did. And I'm hoping that, you know, constantly releasing this stuff, it, you know, I'm taking the model of like, you know, YouTube web series where they say it's very important to have consistency where you're always releasing, you know, an episode once every Wednesday at 10 a.m. or whatever it is. So I try to like create a lot of extra exclusive content over, you know, a couple of weekends about a month ago so that I could you know, not have to think about it for the next couple of months and that kind of stuff in hopes that that will help build the market. Yeah. Yeah. So it's what, um, what ha- kind of feedback have you gotten from the, the people that have seen the film? Um, in terms of, I guess, is there like one or two scenes that somebody just really resonates with? Like, cause you said it's, it's cause it's more of a sketch base. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of characters in it. It's all That's, like it surrounds itself around this concept of bad people in, in a right. fun and dark comedy way. But has right. there been like one or two scenes that people sort of resonate with better um, that you've seen in some of the early showings or anything? Yeah, well, I think the people what's cool about that concept is everyone's going to resonate with at least one, two, hopefully all of them, but at least one or two of them. Um, I think our newscasters you know Kentucky Fried Movie they mm-hmm. had the newscasters kind of in and out of the movie like the one liners that were so hysterical that I thought were like just brilliant and genius um, so I made one of the vignettes to be these newscasters and they pop up throughout the whole film and everyone seems to love them and in large part because we're very lucky we have a gentleman Ben Glebe who's a comic um, and he seems to be, he is kind of, you know, experiencing, you know, he's, he's getting a lot of work now and it looks like he's going to, you know, um, get a lot more. And he's just one of these guys that's naturally funny. And throughout all the screenings, whether it be, you know, my close friends, or family, 
when they watch the movie, they'll they'll resonate with you know one of the shorts or the sketches, but they always are like, I can't wait to see what that next new sketch is because that guy's so freaking hysterical. Um, I gave him a script, but I, he's a brilliant comic, so I said just use my script as kind of like a guidepost, and I just let him run, and he's. I mean, my biggest challenge on set was not to ruin the takes because I was literally like almost <laughs> crying behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, um, He's that funny. And then my biggest challenge in post was picking the take because he, you know, he's that funny. And his co-star with him, Annie Gerard, is she was playing more like the straight character and she was brilliant in it too, kind of the two of them complimented each other great. And I think everyone that has watched the movie has commented on them. And so in the trailer, I put him up first because you'll just see his comic timing. He's just, he's just, he's one of those guys that's got it. You know, you can go to a million comedy improv classes and train, but this guy just has something that's, I don't know, he's just talented. Um, so I think that would be like the scenes that everyone always points to. Okay. Uh, because I was I was thinking like strategically what you have like with everything that you got going on like I can see you saying like can I just dedicate like one weekend creating content and I think you already might have the content there because you have I mean you know people I mean depending on what your contract is with your distributor which is a distributor uh, yeah your the distribution company the distribution deal you, you got. Um, I'm wondering like how much you can share the film and I, what I mean by that is I can see sharing uh, snippets of the uh, scenes in the movie um, that just give a taste you know like a complete thought like because there's a trailer that gives us you know moments but we don't there's nothing like in context like if there was like you know a scene from bad people and then all of a sudden it's like the the newscaster scene and then it ends you know, on a great, you know, punchline. And then you could do like a, a, a quick montage of all the other stories that are involved and says, you know, coming soon to online right. platforms. You know, it's like a sort of a different type of trailer, but you're right. it, it's it's giving more content. So people, it, it's like a shareable bits and pieces that could be shared on Facebook and on, you know, Twitter totally. or, or whatever, or even uh, Instagram. So some people see it like, you know, laugh or comment or share, you're, you're, you're lobbing it up so that there's an opportunity there. So that I can see one weekend where you're just, you already have the material. You're just, you cut together the montage, a quick montage of all the other bad stuff going on that, and then the call to action of like where people can find bad people, the movie. Um, but then you just start finding scenes that, that are, that throughout the movie that you know would be great that would be great to share and maybe there's only six of them or five of them but that that's something that could be rotated every other week so one week you can just pump the one clip and then uh the, the next week you pump the second clip you know and then by the time you get down to one month later you you recycle the the you know back to the top clip again because you know like four weeks might go by and you know people forget or like oh i saw that again you know so it's with five pieces of content or six pieces of content or four pieces of content, you can figure out a way to cycle it, you know, through. Now, that's one thing you could do r realistically in your situation, because I think you probably already have all the content. And then I, and, and like still frames, you saw what I did um, when uh, like a couple months ago, I just took a screen grab of one of like some outrageous moment of one of your characters, like her face is like what, and then we put bad people in there or like, then you could put a little, a little tagline like from the movie, you know, uh, I forget exactly what it was. It's like, you know, some, you, you wrote sometimes it's, I think it was like, sometimes it's good to be bad or it yeah. was, it was awesome. Right. Right. And, and the font choice it was awesome. I've run with that. I've taken that font. It's on my website. I've made other stills. I was like, God, Scott picked the perfect font. It's super <laughs> cool. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> well, I remember you had like this per like this pink purple color theme to your your I think early cut I saw of your trailer. So I was just kind of yeah. grabbing it from there. But those things are great because there's here's a trick that for people that you know follow YouTube stars, um, one of the, the things that the YouTube stars suggest is that when you're picking a thumbnail, um, one, you th like if you have any kind of video in there, but 
uh, the thumbnail needs to be something that's going to actually be in the video. So there's a, a relationship, a correlation. But mostly they're, they said that they're, they're looking for like big faces of, you know, people's faces with an extreme sort of emotional reaction, which is why you see like if you start thumbing through uh, YouTube, you're going to see like some of a lot of the YouTube stars. They'll have some text about what their video might be. But there's usually just a like a bit a picture of their face like doing something or like in, in a moment of like uh, of, of some extreme emotion, you know, because it's that's what cl that makes us click it. So you have all these scenes with bad people. They can create a, a series of just still clips um, that you can use over the weekend, too. So now you have you have video clips and you have uh, still frames that create this emotion and you just have the, con the consistent call to action which is driving people to you know eventually it's going to be wherever it's going to be on sale or whatever it might be um, right. ideally ideally you want to be able to use the call to action to drive them to some sort of giveaway where you give them some sort of free gift in exchange for an email address so that way you collect emails that people that are interested in you or what you have to offer um, so that you're ready for the next film. And this email list that you build up is that's the first step I'm saying like, hey, I've got my next film and I'm starting from scratch. And that's that concept of building an audience early. Um, sure. So that giveaway and to be in service to something, it's like, um, like top 10 like what you can do is you can literally kind of almost find something in one of those celebrity tabloid um, uh, websites. They always do something like um, 10 celebrities. You won't believe what they look like now. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a, that's a clickbait stuff. It's like, okay, I got to see what somebody looks like now, you know, right. <laughs> right. but you, you can find something in the same line, like um, 10, 10 outrageous, uh, bad things that celebrities did or something, you know, right. uh, like right. you, you can find it. And so that's like your free PDF giveaway for an email right. exchange, you know, um, because it's, so, just a, it's just a clickbait thing and it didn't cost you much. And that could be done over the weekend as well. So now you just you, you just curated a news item, but you put your own graphics on it saying like, you know, um, whatever. You know, Nicholas Nicholas Cage, Cage did this. You know, or sort of like all these news reports. Like I didn't know somebody did that bad. You know, <laughs> or like or like something like or Baron Barry. Like here, like all the stories of like all the, all these celebrities that did something bad but got away with it. You know, it's funny uh, because there's you know with with this theme, there's endless content to be found. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. It, it, <laughs> You know, and people always gravitate towards like, you know, wanting to see like, oh, what did they, how did that person get in trouble? What did they do? Um, <laughs> right. Or yeah. you can, um, or you can create it as one single blog post on your site so that it's, it, that's what it is. It's whatever, 10, 10, th 10 bad things, uh, whatever celebrities did and got away with it. Or if, kind of play around with that headline a little bit more so it's, it reads better. But the, when somebody clicks on it, they can go through and um, there's kind of a, you know, they can scroll through and read about these, all these things that had happened to celebrities and you have some great visuals. And then in between the, the blog posts, I, I'm, I'm not sure, are you a comic book fan or anything like that? A what? A, 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 a comic book fan or a comic book reader? Uh, no, I haven't read too many, but I have been to Comic-Con and okay. that's been an exciting experience. So this is really cool. So this is something that, um, those of, you know, uh, collecting comics and so on, like, like opening like a Marvel comic or a DC comic, you know, you one episode, one issue, you open it up and first off, there's the cover that gets you interested in whatever, you know, the next Spider-Man issue is. And then... There'll be a couple ads, like any magazine, like the first two pages are some ads, right? They're advertisements for something related. Here's the latest video game. Here's the latest toy. And then it gets into the story. It, may, it, it goes for maybe three, four pages. And then, then they break in those three, four pages, another ad for some other, some other thing related to, you know, uh, the Marvel Universe or sometimes they show like previews of all the other episodes coming out so this is the same comps you're in television so you know like when you're watching an ABC show 
and you're watching, you know, whatever there might be, uh, or and NBC. So we watch like NBC and we're watching the Olympics or you're watching football and they'll interject like, you know, check out on whatever, like on Tuesday night, the, the latest episode of whatever it is. So it's like another show they're pimping, you know, it's cross promotion. Sure. So sure. Um, the like they'll never advertise for like a CBS show on an, on an NBC show, you know, so it's like, OK, so what you can do is with this blog post that's clickbait um, is in between like every two um, um, highlights. Like so, so you have a list of ten. So you say you you list off the first two celebrities did something bad and got away with it, and then interject like uh, in the blog post some advertisement or something catchy about your movie, and then you go into three four like the third and fourth you know celebrity, and then again yeah. interject. So like throughout the blog post. And it, you'll notice this now if you start looking at some uh, uh, um, you know articles that are posted online. You'll notice like they'll you'll read it for a while, then there's like a break that says if you want to know more, you know, like and then you have to like jump down to continue reading the article or whatever it might be. Um, you'll see it kind of all over the place. And once you kind of tap into, it, you're like, oh wow, check that out. So even if nobody buys sort of the um, you know, your movie from that, it's just exposure, exposure. And yet you've got something there, you know, um, here's another trick that you can use that you can do over the weekend that won't kill you, kill, you know, kill you is that you take that same blog post, you know, that you wrote up or that you curated. Cause obviously you don't have to do the research. You just, you know, find it someplace else and you just, you just <laughs> assemble it in a way that makes sense for, you know, your headline. You can take the same article and then turn it into a YouTube video and also a Facebook video. And it's one of those dumb videos that you've seen before where you take celebrity photos and there's no video. It's just like, you know, um, whatever, fair right usage of their their photos. And you put up on a, a video that's moving and then you just put text on top of it. Like, you know, back in 2009, you know, this celebrity did this, you know, and, and so it's like, you know, and then you go number two, you know, it's like this, this ranking video that people, you see it all the time in Facebook, you're, you're thumbing through and you stop and like, you gotta like, it's playing automatically. And the only way you can make that happen on Facebook is if you upload the video directly onto Facebook, um, that allows their, their sort of mechanism to like, those videos are automatically played in the uh the timeline when somebody's scrolling if you right. just link to a youtube video th facebook purposely just make sure that it's just a, a link and they keep the thumbnail really small so they don't really favor you know youtube videos at all they want you to upload directly to facebook so yes. it's so you you upload directly to youtube to have um um you know this headline so it exists up there and and there's a way actually to, um, you just have to do a search, I have to find it exactly, but there's a, in the tagging, the tagging section of a YouTube video for, so, so number one, you want to make sure you have a sim, like a really catchy headline. So that way the, the Google YouTube search engines can find it. Like it's similar, like top 10 things celebrities did wrong or whatever, or bad. Um, those are like, like clickbait headlines. And then within like the description you can you know give indications of uh, of what the what the video is about but then you can in interject like if you want to know more about bad people check out the latest movie like so you can start interjecting your your uh, movie into your description and then uh, in the tags the thing is you start tagging like all the celebrities that are in your article or that video that you made because then, because yeah. so, that way, somebody's searching for you know Jennifer Lawrence and blah blah blah, and then you know, on the side, it's like her picture is a, is the a thumbnail, and it says, you know, ten you know things celebrities did bad and got away with. You know, they might be interested in clicking that, you know. <laughs> sure. So you might yeah. have a you might have a you can, you can actually upload I think or re-upload the same video with uh, maybe a different thumbnail. Um, for each celebrity. So if you have 10 celebrities, you know, a difference, you upload it like 10 times, but you have to change some things a little bit in the meta description, just so that even though it might be the same video, it gives you an opportunity to have the different, um, or you might just switch the order of it. 
You know what I mean? Like, so it's like you might have the same ten um, uh, celebrities, but if if the if the first one is about like Nicolas Cage, and that's the thumbnail you're going to use is like his face, Nicolas Cage. You put him first, and like the second one is like um, I don't know Gary Busey, you know, or something like that. Then you know, <laughs> then the next video you make, just swap it, just make him the first one, you know. So it's like. So you can have 10 videos. It's the same video. You just have to reorder and change the thumbnail out. But you have 10 videos that's specific. And then you have that multiple content, you know, out there. And that's you're an editor. So it's, it'd be fairly easy just to sort of switch it around, you know. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying is it's some something simple that's in alignment with your movie. And this is something that could be done uh, over a weekend, you know. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. you're you're not creating any content really. When I say create, you you don't have to go out and film anything. It's it's all there for the taking. It's just that your power as an editor, you can you know crank this out, uh, uh, you know, over a weekend and be like, wow, I've got a lot of content now. Now I can just over time just start you know feeding it out to the social media. But knowing that I'm comfortable enough that when I, when any, anybody sees something here, I've got to have a really good call to action or something. The, uh, so at the end of the video, they says, if you want to know more, here's, you know, go to this link, whatever the link is that you have where somebody can sign up for your email to get, um, you know, the next 10 bad things people have done. You know, it's like you tease them with the free one, but if they want to know more, just, you know, here's an email and get, and, and, and just say what it is and also get more information about the movie, the new uh, indie dark comedy, Bad People, you know? Right. Right. You know the you know what it is is the because that's that's it you're you're using bait click material to grab a huge net, but then the email ask what you're asking for the email in exchange for some other gift which is more information about you know your next list, that's your um, filtration system or your funneling uh, it's. Um, your vetting system. It's what people do to vet customers. Because that way, if anybody is willing to give you their email address to really get the next, you know, list of bad things people did, they may actually, they're, they're hot leads. They're Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross leads. They're people that are actually interested in what maybe what you're making. You know, yeah. you wouldn't want like, you know, a thousand people on your email list and only, you know, 10 people are interested because sometimes then you have to pay for the thousand people on your email list, you know? <laughs> 100%. So yeah. that then, is, yeah. By doing that, you're, tar you're, you're, you're grabbing the people that were clicking on that kind of, like you said, that content that is, that is in line with the movie. So you are kind of finding your audience. Right. Exactly. And it's, it's just, it's just a, an easy way of, of, not spending a lot of money to do it. I, I plan to do something that like that later. Once I understand what the hell my story is about, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like so, like it's funny because this is like I've had I've I've been studying all this this stuff and I've been curating this information and I'm seeing how some people work it and how other people don't work it, and it's like interesting to me. Um, but my own action, my own um, you know physical sort of acting on these ideas um i have to put in the back burner because i still have to get through the first step which is i still have to make a really good story you know <laughs> so yes. that's like so that's sort of like i i realize i'm in it for the long i'm i that's the tortoise and hare story i'm the i'm the tortoise like i'm going i'm not going as fast as the hare i'm going as slow as a tortoise on this thing <laughs> but to, for your situation if we're going to do bar rescue style um i think you could do that over the weekend you could you could have fun making something like that over the weekend. Now there is something glaring to me right now, which is your film premiere in terms of the the Valley Film Festival, and yes. I think all your effort needs to be put on that in terms of getting as many friends and family. Just start with that first, your friends and family, and then your cast friends and family. You know, just make sure as many of them come out to that showing, and yes. if there's a way that you can ask um someone to take photos of the of the night you know uh, people as well as video because what you want to do is y you need to collect that footage because later on you can create a a uh, a marketing video of people that want to see it and if you can get like a like infrared 
camera or something of people you've seen it done for horror films like paranormal activity but you might be able to do it with people laughing in the theater you know um uh, and then get get people coming out of it you know hopefully not the stars and stuff like that but people like their friends and family people that just look like they're normal people right reacting to the movie right after it's finished you know and so you what you may need to do is you're in LA. It shouldn't be that hard to find somebody to be like, do you have a camera? You know, one, I need somebody to take still photos. Two, I need somebody to take um, video footage of the event and people watching the movie as it's happening. And then I need somebody to interview people as they're coming out um, because I need testimonials. And if you have like an attractive actress or something that can do the um, ask, so they're, they're the interviewer, you know, that makes it much more attractive as somebody come up and go, oh, I will talk to this pretty person and and share them my good feelings about the movie, you know? Right. And right. Um, you kind of have to like focus on making sure you have that because what, what will happen is at least you'll have some content that you can edit together in short snippets and you can sh- – because then your second half of the push marketing-wise, once your film is going to be online, like at for sale – you can use this one event, just simple, this one event that showed people that they they enjoyed it. And it, it it's a it's an aspect of in marketing called social proof. Because it's like, you know, when we're driving by a restaurant and you see a line at the door. For, like up here in Portland, Oregon, we have the, the famous voodoo donuts, which is nuts. They have these really nutty donuts, you know, um, nutty in terms of like, not just nuts, but they have like, <laughs> they got just like inappropriate names for donuts and they have like a weird concoction of certain donuts. I think uh, uh, Andrew, what's his name? Bourdain? Was that right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anthony Bourdain. Anthony, Anthony, uh, Andy. Yeah. He had gone there and his favorite was the uh, maple bacon uh, donut. So they put like a bacon <laughs> on top of a maple donut and it's delicious. But you, I'm not kidding you, just on a consistent basis, the line is out the door, like, and it's yeah. a, the 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 donut shop is only as small as like somebody's like little bedroom, you know, yeah. and so that's social proof that makes people think like this is worth something. Um, when you go to, and there's, if there's another donuts you know shop down the street and there's like nobody there, you, you're less likely to feel compelled to actually go there. Totally. So the totally. social proof shows that people enjoying it, if just you know, and their reaction to it. So you can do like an edit where there's a snippet of some f- comedy bit from your movie cut to somebody's reactions, you know, from the pr- the premiere and then right. back to, so it, it's one that you can figure out what you want to do from there, but you have content for the second half. So after the premiere's done the at the film festival, at least you'll have something to take away. Because the worst thing that will happen is you have an event and went really well, but you had nothing to document it on. Like you, totally. you want to level up from that point. And th- these are things you can do that will fit into your real life, you know, work schedule and family schedule. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, I, I would, I would start there. I would start something like that. And like, you know, it, honestly, if the first thing I taught, we talked about doing that clickbait sort of blog post and then doing those videos, you know, yeah, you can do that later, honestly, after your film festival premiere. I think everything needs to be focused on your film festival premiere. I think you need to make sure you, you have your photographer, your videographer, your interviewer, and then y- you just need to spend as much time uh, as my uh, my friend over at Indie Film Hustle, Alex Ferrari. I mean, he's, he's the, mo- the biggest hustler I've ever... I mean, like, he hustles in terms of... He works so hard at getting his message out and all the stuff he does. I've never seen somebody uh, hustle as much as he does. But yeah. I, I remember doing this once before where I was hustling for my premiere and that's where we want to focus that your energy is like, look at, I only have X amount of time during the day. So I'm going to need to enlist the people that were in this movie to be my advocates to like, what can we do to, you, you need to call them up again and get them all together. Like we having this screening, we need you to get as many people as there as possible, you know? Um, and so now it's just with your sphere of influence, you know, don't worry about outside people. Like if you can just jam the theater packed with just friends and family, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That, 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 seats. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Yeah. Just get people in the seats. Definitely. 100%. Here's a story that's hilarious. Um, 
when filmmakers they hate doing the promotion the self promotion and they hate doing yeah. like all that stuff they just want to make the movie and 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 be discovered and they want somebody else to do all the hard work for them so they can go on to the next level uh, next thing but nobody's going to care about your project as much as you do so yes. you have to be the biggest cheerleader there is now you might overdo it like on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you are communicating with your your cast and crew, your friends and family, and then their friends and family of that cast and crew, whatever you're doing where you're you just feel like you're over overdoing it in terms of like letting them know like it's Thursday, guys, Thursday, September 29th, 10 p.m. Here's the information. Like you could have all that stuff in there. I swear to God, somebody's gonna go like, okay, when is it? <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't matter like people don't read and stuff like that but when you're at the point where you feel like you've exhausted all your effort and you've annoyed every friend and family and every yeah. and all their friends and family just when you feel like you've annoyed everyone come this is a story that's true like some guy had a premiere like in a cineplex as well and he was there greeting everybody that's coming in and he was just like he was exhausted it's just exhausted because he felt like he just just overdid it and uh one of his best friends from like school uh you know walked up like hey man what's going on i've seen you in a while like, yeah because and the guy the filmmaker is like oh man thank you so so much for like coming and you know supporting and the film and stuff and his friend's like what you got a film here i'm here to see like iron man you know <laughs> like just because you think you're overdoing it believe me you're not overdoing it because the people out there that even your closest friends and family will be like, I didn't know that. I didn't know you were making a movie. 100%. Totally. <laughs> totally. I know because you do, you, you, I do have that fear. I think everyone has that fear where you feel like, Oh, I don't want to keep like, you know, badgering people, you know, status updates and things like that. But you're right. That feed goes by fast and you know, people are so busy with their lives and you know, yeah. But, uh, and even though you'll have like people look like they're they're gonna be there, they're gonna be there, they still won't show. Right. Like you know they, they'll oh, they, no. especially you're in L.A. Man, it's oh, not like man. the East Coast where they're like serious about their commitment. You know, on the West Coast, it's like it is it, so fleeting. Yeah. Especially in Los Angeles, you have to take their emotional temperature like 20 minutes before the event, and then maybe. <laughs> now here's the thing too. Is there something fun you could offer? Yeah, is there a bar nearby? Is there is some giveaways well, that you can offer up? Because I know in LA, man, you know, it's like there these screenings are like always happening. I mean, it's all the time. All the time. So like how do you stand out? Again, just think about the friends and family of yours as well as the cast and crew. How can you make it super special so it's just not a screening? Like, right. is there a bar after party? We're going to have a great time there. Um, is there some other value that you can bring to it that's going to make people, sh you know, show up or at least give them better reason to show up? Totally. That's a great idea. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a 10 p.m. screening and I, you know, I, I send out some emails and I send out some Facebooks, uh, you know, posts and it was kind of like, let's meet up beforehand because a lot of us, you know, I mean, with kids, we don't get to see our friends that often. So, it's, you know, we're going to get a babysitter and all that. Um, but you're right. Like, maybe if we, like, worked out a deal with a bar where it's, like, you know, free booze for a little bit. <laughs> um, or, you can just, or you can just say, like, we're meeting here for happy yeah. hour prior to the screening. Right. So, um, or it not, you know... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those things Some, like along those lines where it's like yeah, because I I I think if you if we try and create like it more of an event as opposed to just a screening, because you're right, because there's in LA there's so many screenings, there's so many actors that want you to come to their play or what have you, and it's great. But yeah, I think if we focused on like let's hang out beforehand, and it's late enough that everyone can get off work and get there. Um, and just, you know, chill, reconnect because, you know, my, my wife and I haven't seen a lot of our friends in a long time, Yeah, um, which is, which would be awesome. Here's something you could do as a fun in games is like, if, because it's now you're like entertainer, like you're the host, you have to, you're hosting a party. So your movie is just like an icing on the cake. So instead of like getting people like, please come to see the movie. It's like, no, 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 I'm throwing a party. 
we're it's an app it's a happy hour beforehand party and we have tons of games we're going to do and one of the games we're doing is a competition you need to share your most bad people story ever like something something you did horrendous that you're ashamed of uh, or something that because and then we're, we're going to read them out loud it's sort of like you know it's a sharing like like people just sharing in the in the, in the bad things we do and then we will vote you know everybody will vote like cheer or whatever or like or something you have maybe a chart that says oh that that story was the that's the one that took it then you can have some gift to give away and it's like you know it's sort of it's just think of it think of it as your th- a party but what stupid party games can you hold and have and then you advertise that it's just something that like oh this is so awesome i'm loving that <laughs> okay so so now yeah so now you're the party host and you're trying to get people engaged cuz now it's interesting what you're trying to do is give people an excuse to get out of the house and so, and make sure they're going to have fun. And the movie is not – then you don't put as much pressure on the movie as possible. The movie is, yeah. just, is just like uh, – it's just an added extra, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you get somebody film and video or f- take f- photos and film the party. Yeah. You know, or something because then, then you have that material. You got people coming out of the theater, you know. Um, and then tell people in the theater, like before it starts, or if there's a Q and A afterwards, it's simply like you will see, you know, uh, Barbara and you know John back there with the camera. Please, after we're done, they're gonna ask you a question. Please, you know, tell them like tell them what you want them to do. Go there and tell them what you thought about the movie. You know, right. and right. that's and uh, people just kind of need to be led by the hand and and told like I need you to do this. Right. You know, and they're like, okay, you know, <laughs> but if you leave it up to them to figure it out, they're like, ah, you know, I'm, I got to go to bed. I'm going to go, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Scott, I love that concept. I think that'd be so much fun. I mean, first of all, it gets, what's great about it is like, yeah, it get, there's the incentive and it's fun, but also you already are pretty much priming up the audience to be like laughing and like kind of creating a community because there are going to be a lot of friends that don't know each other and then you're sharing these (laughs) hysterical stories i think it's awesome oh Uh, yeah and if your actors are there and people that get to meet the actors prior and see it it's like you've invited them into your little market and party oh so yeah no, that's great. I love that. I gotta. I, I'm definitely gonna make that the focus for the next, you know, week and a half or so before the screening. That's 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 awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, I think in terms of that, it, it, there's no guarantee. The, the reality is, is that this. I don't know if you heard that saying before. Like, you know, reach for the stars because if you know, you're not gonna get the entire Milky Way. You're not going to get the entire galaxy. You're not going to get every star out there up in the sky. Um, But you're not going to come up with a hand of mud either. You know, it's meaning like if you don't try, you know, yeah, you may not exactly get there, but you're not going to be stuck sitting on the ground with, you know, with a handful of mud in your hand either. So if you try just a a little bit, but again, it's a lot of effort. It's like, as we just talked about, as much hustle, as much effort you put into it, where you're bleeding your eyes out, you know, you, you think it's going to happen. The 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 conversion or the 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 the, um, the number of people that actually show up, you have to also be prepared. Like I'm doing all this effort, all this effort for maybe a handful handful of people to show up. You know, <laughs> I know. It just. Yeah. I think on one of your podcasts you had said um, like the conversion rate for a trailer to convert to a purchase is like two to three percent or something yeah. like that. That's pretty standard on anything, on almost any industry. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. Like when you think about how many people have to see that trailer then, I was just it was it was daunting. I was like, that statistic is and I think at the time you guys were talking about the uh the Brad Pitt action movie, a war movie or mm-hmm. something. I forget the movie. It a handful of them, a handful of stars were in. And like they had a slightly higher conversion rate, but even that wasn't that much higher. And I was just it might like, be three to ten percent because of Brad Pitt's in it. Yeah, yeah, and that's still you know ten percent is still one. You know, that's I was I was amazed. So yeah, it's a lot of work just to grab uh you know a couple of people. So 
I love these this these inventive um, ways of you know kind of inviting people in um, with these incentives. I mean, I would have never thought of that. You are really good at coming up with this <laughs> stuff, Scott. I mean, really good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, um, but that's uh, hopefully that's the idea. Hopefully, people listening to this episode can see themselves in the same boat. Like here, you are. You have a finished film. It got into a film festival. That is something to be celebrated. But now you're like, well, how do I get people to see my film? And I think that's the fun thing about like throwing it away and saying, you know, the night that we create is not going to be about the film. What right. the night about is a celebration uh, of good times and community. And I'm going to be the um, the the ringleader for it. And we're going to have funds and game. It's like I'm throwing if I'm going to throw a party at my house, this is what I would do. And the and the movie is just one little thing at the end. But right. There's some tactics again. Tactics again. Make sure you are recording this happening, so just so that you can figure out what to do with it later in terms of marketing wise. And then when everything settles, you get through this month, and um, think about using that silly uh, blog post idea to curate an audience that may be interested in your movie. Again, one to two percent might actually just convert and give you. Um, so a thousand people might come and click your article or watch your video. But maybe one two to two percent will actually, you know, give you your email, give their email up to get your next piece of content. And then right. once there, once you create that email list of people, maybe only one to two percent will actually buy your movie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like it's I, it's you it getting that expectations. But once you realize that's what the game is, then then it becomes metrics, and you're like. Okay, it is sort of working that way. It's true. Like 1%, 2% is only actually, you know, making the effort. So that means I increase, you know, um, my traffic. And that's why these websites do what they do. They're like, okay, we need to get as much traffic as possible because the more traffic we have, that correlates to 1% to 2% conversion, you know, yeah. of a sale or whatever it might be. Um, you know, there's a lot of different metrics to it, but that's at least to get yourself started. Because once you go down that rabbit hole, um, you know, you'll see what works and what doesn't work. And maybe there be a point where you're like, you know, I did is all I can do with bad people. I think I'm ready to close it up, you know, end this chapter of my time. But it was a good learning lesson. I learned a lot and we did make our money back or whatever. And we got, and I was able to collect, you know, X amount of number of uh, emails that people are interested in what my next film is going to be, you know? Sure. And you build it and you build it from there. And again, it's a tortoise in the hair. We're independents. We can't move as fast as the big guys do sometimes because we don't have the money or the resources behind it. And there's one thing I've seen work for the independents really well is a team. When you're running solo by yourself, you're only able to give so much effort. Like you said, you have a full, beyond a full-time job, you have beyond a full-time job with your family. So your efforts are going to be limited on how, you know, what you can put, what energy you can put towards your film. So if you can develop from this, you know, strong working partnerships with other filmmakers or something like that, and a team, a teamwork can then go even further. And that's what seems to be working for a lot of the independent uh, projects I see come through. They, there's more than just one person. And there's a whole saying in the world of startups and venture capitalists, venture capitalist investors will not invest in one person. They will. They need to see there's a team. And now this is yes, the tech world and things like that. But I think the same could be say, said to uh, you know an independent film project team. So something to think about. Yeah. Sure. Sure. No, that 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 definitely would take a lot of the workload and the burden off. And also because you know it, some those people have different sets of friends than I do. Um, so it just expands the reach and takes the workload off. Because yeah, time is. Time's hard, and even if you know I can carve out time, but at the end of the day, I'm you know you can get tired too. Even if you have a couple hours, you're just kind of trying to recharge from what everything you have been doing. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a great idea. Um, that's a great idea. I think I'll definitely try and get my cast and stuff like that to to be you know some of our soldiers to kind of help us get get the word out and help. Yeah, and as long as they know it's a party. <laughs> and, 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 it's a party. and it's a party yeah. to celebrate them yeah i mean 100%. i mean that then they're obligated you know as yeah. long as you 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 know what i mean as long as you uh preface it um try to make it all about them 
um, and not you, not about the movie, but like if they're in the movie, it's like, I want to, we need to celebrate you. Let's, you know, the pre-party, the screening, you know, bring your friends and family, you know, here, let me know how I can help. I can give, you know, I've got tons of like marketing material to give to them to make it easy. And you might have to create like a really simple flyer or something or all the information. So it doesn't get lost in translation, you know, just mm. like, here it is, here's the flyer or here's the, the, the email information you can send to your friends and family right now. Right. Um, and I made it real clear where they can get tickets, where it's going to be, you know, where the happy hour is going to be or wherever my, you know, all, all the pre-party and what we're going to do. Like you, you have to spend time making sure that you're communicating it as, as clearly as possible. Don't let it, don't leave it to chance like them to screw it up by saying, Oh, I said it was Friday, you know? <laughs> yeah. Something where it's literally just copy and paste. Yeah. Mentality. Yeah. You know, where it's like, it, it's basically bulletproof in the sense that like, you know, all the, you've done all the work for them. They just have to like literally press share. Right. But then, then you need to follow up with them. Then you follow up with like you with, um, multiple ways of communicating email yes and then text then a phone call just to check in with them to say did you get all the stuff because even if you even if you sent it once you know don't let it just die there you have to be pretty persistent in the follow-up but it's all kind because you're like hey i just want to make sure you're going to be there because you've got to be there we've got this whole thing special for you you know like you know <laughs> like there's a special thing we're going to do at the party for you and you got to be there and they're like, oh, okay, you know, so they feel, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll okay, I'll make it happen, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then, totally. and, and then all I'm asking is like, make sure, do you have any friends and family that are going to be coming? Yeah, I got a few guys. Okay, what do they need to get some of their friends and family? You know, it's like, it, you you have to be between now and that premiere, you you've got to just be all as every waking hour you can or moment you have is contacting one of the people on your cast and crew and just make it, you know, happen or create a private Facebook group or like in a, or something like in, in Facebook, if you don't know how to do it, find somebody who does know how to do it and create like an event page. And right. because then that way the event is a reminder to everybody like it's happening. And on that page, you can start adding all your content. Like, you know, sharing your daily, it's like your daily thoughts about here we are, we're, we're ramping up or getting somebody here. I need this or we're going to have this party. Again, that's all that enthusiasm. And then, you know, 3% three, 3 of the people show up. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it happens. But I think, uh, yeah, like, you know, like I said, it's, it may not be perfect in your in, in the execution and the effort, but, a bit, but the effort, at least if you try, it's better than yeah. not trying, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that's a lot of actionable stuff that I can get going in the next week or so, which is great. Um, uh, I, I just love the concept of the, of the party where everyone is just revealing the dark secrets. And then like, you know, and if they didn't want to reveal it themselves, you could almost make it anonymous where you drop it into yeah. the bag and the winner will have the incentive to reveal that it was themselves because they want the prize. But because it's anonymous, they'll be more likely to, you know, really give us the goods. Yeah. And, it, and if you go to like, I'm sure there's a lot of fun sh shops up in L.A. Uh, like there's a chain store called En Fuego up here that's like um, just ridiculous, like novelty gag gifts like uh i we bought one it was like um drinking buddies and what what it is is like these little miniature um uh guys in swimsuits like uh, uh, speedos with their names yeah. on their on their asses that, that you <laughs> that you hang on your wine so like you know they're everybody's got wine glasses so in order to understand at a party whose wine glass is who uh, you just stick these things on top. So you have these like little drinking buddies uh, and they make one for men too. It's like um, a booze and buddies or something for women, you know, like they're, they're the little miniature girls or there's these ridiculous things. Uh, they have another one called like drinking chaps, which is like these cowboy guys with like a a assless chaps. Like you, they hang on your wine glasses. What I'm saying, like there's a lot of just fun gag gifts that you can offer that is totally in alignment, totally in context of what your movie's about. Um, and then, you know, you know, maybe sit down with your wife and have fun with it. Like, if we're going to throw the ultimate party, what would it be? Like, what, how would we make this happen? And just make it simple and make it fun and make it doable. Like, you know, because ideas are like, you can go crazy with all the ideas. But then it comes down to actually doing it. 
Yeah. To be really effective, you just got to like, you know what? I, this is what we can do in the time frame. So let's just yeah. focus on making that happen. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it, Scott. Um, well, I I think all of us would love to hear how it goes. So um, I'll, I'll try to get this podcast out as soon as possible, like next week. And then... Um, and then you can tell us how how, how it went. Like you know, yeah. if, if you got content, if you were able to, to edit like a um, a little montage video of what happened, or like some ad, you know, promotional videos. Um, I think it'd be really cool for people to hear like, well, what happened? You know, how did the yeah. the premiere went? Did 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 the party go off? Or what what didn't work? Or what did work? You know, things like that would be really helpful. Totally, I think that I think that'd be awesome. It'd be like a, a miniature case study of yeah. You know, trying this this method to see you know how many people can get out to a screening by offering a fun party yeah Uh, cool well i appreciate it scott that's awesome i i think that's a great idea i'm definitely gonna you know start brainstorming now and find a gift store (laughs) (laughs) yeah and and i I said you know um you know bring your wife into it and and you know how much fun is that i mean i'm I know my my wife is all about planning parties. So you you let you let them unleash, they'll go crazy. Like, yep, make it happen. So, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. All right, man. Well, well, thank you so much for everything, Scott. I really appreciate it. Yeah, not not a problem at all. And I'm really excited to see how this all turns out for you. And definitely want to hear the the you know the follow up for sure. Cool. (laughs) <laughs> Definitely will. I'll keep you posted. No problem. I'll follow up with you later. I'll give you in, indication because then you'll have this as marketing material too. It's your podcast cool. interview. And I'll make sure everybody gets the sh- all the information and what your your film and everything you're working on um, in the show notes. So, um, yeah, have a great weekend and uh, hang in there with the two young ones. <laughs> and the- <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, thank you so much. And, yeah, have a great weekend yourself. And, uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. So that concludes my interview with Alex Petrovich and his movie, Bad People. And you can find more information about it at badpeoplethemovie.com. And if you're in the Los Angeles area on September 29th, check it out. See how he does with this party. And then report back to us to see if it worked. (laughs) Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, think about leaving a ratings and review over at iTunes at filmtrooper.com forward slash iTunes. And a ratings review is always appreciated, so thank you. And lastly, do not go away empty-handed. If you are stuck trying to make your film right now, then I give you a gift at freegearguide.com. It's an equipment list of everything I use to make a feature film for $500 without a crew. Again, that's at freegearguide.com. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you next time. Film Trooper, filmmaking freedom for the independent.